what happened that day? You were on the bus. We were in a construction zone coming across a bridge uh, over a river. The driver tried to overcorrect for oncoming traffic. He felt like he was... Don Prescott was a school chaperone on that horrible day in 2001, riding on a school bus with her son Benjamin and 30 other Nebraska school children. The bus flipped and landed in the creek bed about 49 feet below. Everybody just kind of ended up, you know, being thrown into the ceiling, thrown into each other, and then landing in a heap. The impact killed Benjamin, who was just 14 years old. More than 20 years later, Don is still fighting for the one thing she believes could have saved his life. Do you believe if there were seatbelts in that bus, it would have made a difference? Do I believe? I know it would have made a difference. Right now, there is no universal federal requirement for safety belts on school buses. Crashes are rare, which is why school buses have long been considered one of the safest modes of transportation on the road. But accidents do happen. Just this past November, 16 people were hurt in this crash in Indiana. In Perry County, Ohio, a crash sent eight kids to the hospital in 2019. Watch as the impact sends the children flying. In 2020, this terrible accident involving a school bus in Tennessee claimed the lives of the bus driver and a seven-year-old girl and injured seven children. The NTSB wrapped up its investigation of that Tennessee crash this past fall and concluded that seatbelts could have protected the students on board. In its report, the agency renewed its recommendation that school districts ought to start purchasing buses equipped with three-point belts. It's an added safety feature that Jane Terry with the National Safety Council believes should have happened decades ago. We know for years, decades, that seatbelts save lives, but yet since school buses have been around, seatbelts have not been incorporated in them. We discovered at least 32 states have considered legislation about seat belts on school buses since 2007. Only eight have passed laws. And unfortunately, too many of our safety laws are written in blood, and these are the results of crashes that happen in certain states that cause those legislatures and school boards to act. But we don't need to wait for the crash to occur. Not everyone believes seatbelts are needed. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has said that the unique design of school buses already provides the best safety protection on the road through what's known as compartmentalization with closely spaced seats and energy absorbing seat backs. But Jane Terry told us it's a design that has its limits. That compartmentalization does not work when buses are hit from the side. And we've seen that in a few investigations that the NTSB has done. We found the decision for many rural and cash-strapped districts often comes down to money. But Don Prescott says the federal government should step in, and that based on her experience, after the loss of her son, no cost is too high. What do you think the price of inaction is? It's the increased risk of, of injury, liability, you know, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when. For Spotlight on America, I'm Chris Daniels.